the Nastronomy Smart Telescope pre-processing script can now run three times faster, save you up to 70% of your storage, and now supports four new smart telescopes. We have some big updates to this script, so let's dive into them today. The first biggest update that you'll notice is that we now have four new scopes in the drop-down menu. Three of them are unistellar scope, the EV scope one slash Equinox one, the Equinox two slash EV scope two, and the Odyssey, also known as the Odyssey Pro. And these were all added to the script thanks to the power of open source. As you may know, this script is open source, so anyone can submit changes to the script, and I will review and merge them in as I test them and if they look good. And this was all added by another developer named Nicholas Castell, who has access to both unistellar data as well as the knowledge about how those telescopes work, what their FITS files looks like, so he was able to submit a request to have those scripts, have those telescopes added to the script. I tested them. A couple other people actually tested the unistellar scopes as well. Things went well, got merged in, and now you have them in your drop-down list. So huge thanks to Nicholas Castell for doing this. The fourth scope you'll notice is a dwarf mini. So this was added thanks to data sent to me by a fellow Patreon member, Mike B, who sent me the dwarf data over the weekend. I was able to test it and very quickly add it to the script. So now if you're wondering where is the S30 Pro, well, I just got access to the S30 Pro after I made all of those changes and it's been cloudy. I haven't had a chance to use this yet. I'm pretty sure I know how to add everything here, but I like testing with data and I don't have any S30 Pro data at the moment to play with. But Hopefully I'll get a couple of nights of clear skies over the next week so I can add this in the next patch. Quickly going over one of the other biggest changes made to the script, and that's compression. This was also an idea by Nicholas Castell who implemented it that the script now compresses all of your data before it processes and then turns it off at the final stage. I made some tweaks to this, so I'm turning it on and off at various stages so that it works well, as well as making sure it cleans up well when you want to clean it up. And testing was amazing. For example, stacking Dwarf 3 data, consisting of about 3.31 gigabytes of data, including lights, darks, flats, and biases, with 1x drizzle without compression, the process directory was about 35.2 gigabytes of space. And with compression, it was 10.6 gigabytes. That's a savings of about 70%, which is actually really huge. Not only that, it was actually faster for me. With compression, the script ran in just 2 minutes and 15 seconds. And without compression, it took 8 minutes and 34 seconds, which is still pretty fast, but come on, it's 3.8 times faster. Also did a test with 2x drizzle because I know a lot of people like drizzling more. With that compression, that same bit of data, the 3.31 gigabytes of data, turned into 102 gigs of data, which is a lot. Now with compression, it only took up 32.2 gigabytes of space. That's a 61% savings, so that's huge. And again, it was also faster. Without compression, it took 32 minutes and 36 seconds to run, and with compression, it took 11 minutes and 52 seconds to run, which is 2.75 times faster. Now, the speed savings should be taken with a grain of salt because everyone's system is different. If you have more, if you have a more powerful CPU, more RAM, your hard drive or SSD's read-write speeds are faster. Both of these, with and without compression, will work faster for you, and your savings may not be three times faster. Maybe it'll only be two times faster just because your thing just speeds up. And while I tested this, I did notice, I think I'm killing my SSD, my M.2 drive, where I think I've processed, I've run my scripts probably at least a thousand times since I started writing these scripts back in May. So I've noticed that it stalled a couple of times. So that could have added to the savings that I was seeing. So just something to keep in mind that the savings, the speed savings number should be taken with a grain of salt. But the space saving, the gigabytes of storage that you save, is a little bit more accurate because the file sizes tend to be the same. The only thing that you have to worry about is that is rejection. So if you have frames that are getting rejected more, the amount of space you save may not be 60 to 70 percent. Maybe it'll be 40 to 50 percent only because frames are getting rejected and it's not using as much space. And also, as we saw, drizzle factor does affect it. So the higher your drizzle, the lower the savings seems to be, but it's still really good. Like 61% versus 70% just from my couple of tests that I did with Dwarf 3 data and CSTAR S30 data as well, they were pretty consistent. Again, thanks to Nicholas Castell for starting that process, and I'm just really, really happy with how it turned out. 
those are the two biggest changes and there are a couple of UI changes that I'll go over in a minute. Along with those, there's been some bug fixes, some tooltip updates and some additional tooltips and some better error handling just throughout the script so that it just doesn't give you like a red error whenever it just freaks out. And before the demo, as always, I want to send a huge thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee and on YouTube. You are all amazing. And if you'd like to join them and support me and the work that I do, please check the links in the description below. And if you use my scripts, I would love to hear from you whether you like it or hate it. So let's get to the demo. So we're gonna be working on serial 1.4.1. I'm having to actually re redo this video because as soon as I was done, 1.4.1 uh, came out. So anyways, if you don't already have this script, the way to install it is to go to scripts, get scripts, and here you can just search for an astronomy and it's going to be the first run, the smart telescope pp.py. Select the box, click apply, and it'll download. If you already have it checked, then it'll automatically update for you. To run the script, you'll go to scripts, Python scripts, and then it'll be pre-processing and then astronomy smart telescope pp.py. If you've done any kind of beta testing or if you downloaded the script manually and you put it somewhere else, such as serial scripts like I have here where I do development, you're going to have an outdated version. So I've had people reach out saying that, hey, the script isn't updating. Make sure you're in the correct path in pre-processing smart telescope pp.py. And before I start it up, you wanna make sure that you are in the correct home directory. If you're not, the script will prompt you to find another directory that has the lights folder within it. So just an FYI that you should change your home directory ahead of time, it makes things a little bit easier. So let's just run the script. Scripts, Python scripts, pre-processing, astronomy, smart telescope, pp.py. And this is what the user interface now looks like. It is version 2.0.3. Not much has changed. The main big difference you'll see up here is that it now gives you two statuses, a local astrometry Gaia and a local photometry Gaia. So I initially did this is because I was forcing everyone to use local SPCC for a local photometry Gaia for SPCC. But since serial 1.4.1, there is now an online version of Gaia that actually works. So if you don't see a green local photometry Gaia available, don't worry, it'll be orange and it'll be just a warning saying, hey, you're not using your local Gaia, you're using an online Gaia. So just something to keep in mind. But you still need local astrometry Gaia in order to do plate solving. And you need plate solving in order to have mosaic. So if you don't have, if you wanna do mosaic, you wanna make sure you use local astrometry Gaia. It's only 1.4 gigabytes of space versus the 20 gigs or so for the photometry, which you no longer need, which is really, really good news. And if you hover over this, it'll tell you exactly where it's currently installed. The biggest update you'll see here is, actually, I just noticed this is uh, getting smushed it's because I'm zoomed into my window, so you can always, you know, expand and zoom this out. So that, yeah, so the next biggest update is the telescopes. You click on this, you see four new telescopes. We have the Dwarf Mini, we have the Unistellar EV Scope 1 slash Equinox 1, EV Scope 2, and the Odyssey slash Odyssey Pro. Again, thanks to, huge thanks to Nicholas Castell for making that happen the Unicellar scopes, and thanks to Mike B of Patreon for sending me Dwarf Mini data. Seastar S30 Pro will show up in the next patch. With the UI, everything else is basically the same. There are some error handling that's done, so if you check these boxes and you don't have any of these frames, the script will now not give you an error it used to. You have to make sure that you have that file or have that folder, but you don't need it anymore. Cleanup file still works really well. I had to make some changes to work with the compression, but it works really well. So I'm actually gonna turn this off just to show you what the final files look like. Test here only has 44 files, so it's gonna be super quick. I will do background extraction. I will drizzle. I will do filters of nothing. I'm gonna do like 90% of FWHM just as a test. And feather, I will feather, it does work. But like I said in the last video, if you click on Feather, you get this warning that says you enabled Feather. This can cause slow processing and memory issues. So about like maybe 20%, maybe 25% of people do get a, an error because they have Feather checked. It has nothing to do with the script or serial. It's like hardware dependence. Just when you're feathering thousands of frames, it just just, just errors, out, so errors out at some point. So if you click Feather and you get an error, uncheck it and then try again, and there's currently no workaround for it. Sorry. 
I will also do SPCC. I'm gonna try. I it will. I'll usually use my local photometry, but I'm gonna get rid of it at one point just so I can test the online guy as well. And if you run this and you get an error, you'll see a message in the logs that say normalization failed. That means Cyril produced a black frame. So click on the black frames bug and then run it again. I'm still trying to figure out what's happening there. I made some tweaks to this to see maybe if it'll help, but for the moment, it's still giving some people black frames. I still can't replicate it. It's been, it's been a little bit frustrating trying to figure this out, but anyways, that's basically all you need. And I'm gonna click on run. It'll be super quick. I do have an old processing directory. Do you wanna delete them? I click on yes, it'll delete those files. If it can't delete them, it'll give you a warning. And again, if you need help, the best way to do this is to click on this little button here on the bottom right hand side. It says export to the logs. You click on this, you can click on it at any time, but you normally do it at the end. It'll give you a .log file with a timestamp. You can keep the timestamp and then send it to me on Discord, on Facebook, on Patreon, buy me a coffee. I don't know if buy me a coffee lets you post files. Anywhere basically, and I'll, I'm happy to take a look and let you know where things went wrong. And as I was talking, you can see that 44 frames is nothing to the script. It's already finished. Now look at the auto stretch. There we go. This is a really nice image of M27. I actually took this during a star party in the middle of Boston. I was like Bordel 9. Blew people's minds when they saw this in on my iPad. So a little over, uh, almost a year and a half ago. But yeah, that's basically all there is. It's already SVCC'd, but yeah, I could crop and do some more stuff. Again, if you need help, please send me logs. You can find me pretty much on any platform. I'm very responsive. Just talk to the people I help all the time. Screenshots are also helpful, but also send me logs. Logs are king. And if you have suggestions for improvements or see bugs, please let me know. You can submit them to me on Discord, on the comment section below on GitHub. If you are an open source developer or you want to get into some kind of development, feel free to check this repo out on GitHub, fork it, do some work on it and submit your changes. I'm happy to take a look. Again, huge thanks to Nicholas for all the Unistellar work and getting the compression work started and to Mike B, one of my fellow patrons on Patreon for sending me the Dwarf Mini data because I don't have the Dwarf Mini myself. Questions or comments, let me know. And as always, thank you all for watching and until next time, clear skies. Thank you.